Hi everybody, this is Randy Wakeman. I'm here to talk about shotgun barrels. Now the vast majority of shotgun barrels today made within the last 30 years are uh, chromoly steel. You can call it steelium, you can call it whatever you want, but uh, uh, 4140 chromoly or a slight variation thereof. That's the vast majority of most modern shotgun barrels. There's two basic types, hammer forged. The majority of shotgun barrels out there are hammer forged, which is a bunch of little hammers. It's just, uh, they're all drilled. When you talk about drilled barrels, they're all drilled. The hammer forged barrel uh, goes over a mandrel and you have a bunch of little hammers that uh, apply the bore. Good for mass production. Um, gives a very nice uh, surface finish. Um, the only real issue is that the bore sizes vary. So the Fab Arm, this Fab Arm L4S, has a drilled barrel, it's a tri-bore barrel. The advantage of a tri-bore barrel is that if I'm using a Fab Arm modified choke uh, out of a Fab Arm barrel and a particular shell at a particular range, you're going to get the same pattern, you're going to get the same results. Because you don't have to worry about the two or three thousandths variance either way you're going to get with a hammer forge barrel. The tri-bore portion, it does have an overboard section. Um, the big advantage to tri-bore is that unlike other overboard barrels, since you have a big long uh, pre-constriction area prior to the extremely long choke you get the Venturi effect and that means no velocity loss. If you have an overboard or oversized barrel you're gonna have velocity loss. You burn propellant in a hole, the bigger the hole, in this case the bigger the cylinder, you have less pressure and less velocity. So that's what you get with all fab arm barrels is no velocity loss uh, from, from a gas operated shotgun, no uh, velocity loss from having an oversized center section. So I have a couple targets set up. We've all talked about uh, the mythology of more pellets on target. Of course targets come in all different sizes and all different ranges. Now this time the targets are set up at 30.5 yards. So hopefully this will give you a little better look at the impact. And I'm using a 20 thousandths constriction factory fab arm choke. I'm going to use uh, some Federal Top Guns. Number seven and a half, one ounce, 1300 feet per second. So. I'll start with the left target and I'll fire two shots. Hopefully I'll be able to zoom in close enough so you can watch the impact. So that gives you an idea what two shots will do at 30 and a half yards of a modified choke with top guns. So let's say we want more pellets on target for whatever reason. Well, you can read ad copy if you want, but that's why we add more constriction. So give me a minute and I will switch this 5 slash 10 fab arm choke into a 9 slash 10. and we'll see what happens. So, this is the choke I have been using. You can see it's extremely clean, even though I've been shooting with this 5 slash 10 choke 
quite a bit. This is what I normally hunt with for wild pheasants anyway. Close tolerances, essentially no bleed or blowback. It's the same metal as the barrel essentially. It's 4140 chrome molly, but, uh, but nickel plated. I believe that's nickel plated uh, to reduce any chance of corrosion. You can see how long this choke tube is. The advantage of fab arm tri bore barrels, aside from no velocity loss, is that any fab arm tri bore barrel is steel rated with any choke up to what I've installed in the gun, which is a 9 slash 10 full. So you can go all the way up to. Uh, Typical choke is modified, the 5, uh, the, the, there's the 710, also very common, uh, which would be a light full, 910, which is full, which is what's in it right now, and there is one tighter than that, it's a 10 slash 10, that is the sole exception, that is a lead only choke, uh, but you can use light full and full choke with steel. So, nice advantage if you have to shoot steel, or certainly uh, if you're whacking teal or ducks and you're using steel. So, the 9 slash 10 choke has gone in, and this time I'll shoot at the right target. So that should give us uh, what people claim they want, which is more pellets on target. I can see there's a handful of uh, pellets there splatter from the first one so I'm going to shoot at it anyway you can see there's well, maybe nine pellets but the difference I believe will be tremendous And it sure is. That's obvious, even on the monitor here, that that is much, much denser with the 9 slash 10 choke than it is with the, the 5 slash 10, which is a 20,000th constriction. So, if you want more pellets on target, constriction always works. So there it is. Everybody talks about, uh, not everybody, but uh, a lot of goofy shotgun manufacturers talk about forcing cones, overboring, um, cryogenic treatment. It's, it's, it's nonsense. Somebody ought to just come out and say it. It's absolutely rubbish. Uh, nothing that I can see. But what works? Constriction works. Same shell, and you want a denser pattern with the same shell. There's two shots, one ounce, top gun, fab arm 5 slash 10, and there's two shots with a fab arm 9 slash 10. Now that is just a night and day difference. Let me flip them around. But you see, uh, no comparison. Now, you're not going to have that dramatic of a change in pattern density no matter what you do to a barrel. It's just not happening. Now, there are ways if you want to have a denser pattern with the same choke, let's say the 20,000th constriction choke. There are ways. Uh, use higher antimony shot. Use Remington SDS Premier. That's 6%. Um, uh, I've got the 4% uh, American uh, Claim Field, 
the 5% Peter's Paper, and uh, some 8% Winchester Diamond Grade. So I'll tell you what, I'll do this again. I'll put my 5 slash 10 modified choke back in and I'll compare what would be the cheapest load, top guns, I mean, to, uh, bang for the buck around here anyway, is top guns or uh, Remington gun clubs. Gun clubs are 2% antimony. Uh, if you reload, you go with gun clubs. Same reloading data as you have with, with uh, Remington Clane Field or the STS, STS Nitro 27s, same identical reloading data. So that's uh, terrific for reloaders. So let me change chokes again and then we'll compare uh, the Federal Top Guns to 8% antimony Winchester Diamond Grade. Actually, what am I thinking, except that I'm not. I already dropped a pair of shots through the Fab Arm 5 slash 10 choke with top guns. So I only need to do it once for a comparison. These are Winchester Diamond Grade, one ounce, still number seven and a half. These are 1250 feet per second. So here's the results, of course, um, you're better off trying it with your own shells through your own gun and your own choke at the ranges you want to shoot at, but two shots with Federal Top Guns, two shots with the Federal, I mean, I'm sorry, Two shots with the Winchester Diamond Elite. And there's two shots with Top Guns with the 9 slash 10 choke. So if we're talking pellets on target, more constriction wins. Now between the two, I'd have to, uh, I've got to count pellets. I'm not going to do it right now, but I'll take it home and count pellets. You've got a couple things going for you with uh, the diamond grade shot. They're double screened, and if you cut open cheap shells, including Federal Top Guns, some pellets are going to be eights, some might be seven and a half, some might be eight and a half. So they're not precise. They're designed to be affordable loads. Nothing wrong with them, but you're not going to get a uh, number seven and a half shot. So the pellet counts can vary. And it's hard to tell at a splatter target whether the little holes are made by eight and a half, eight, seven and a half, or even sevens. The Winchester Diamond Grade, um, number seven and a half, eight percent antimony, and they're double screened. So you can be assured that uh, you have a closer tolerance on the pellets than promo loads. So it's going to be closer to number seven and a half uh, than any promo load uh, that you might buy. So is it worth it? Everybody wants to save a buck. Um, this is only 30 yards. So um, if, if money is no object and you're shooting at longer ranges, more challenging targets, you need every pellet you can get. Sure, um, that's why people shoot diamond grade. You hear a lot in the literature about uh, effective spread and killing patterns. Well, a lot has to do with what in the world you're shooting at. Certainly one thing, if you're shooting at a standard clay that's uh, you know a, a half uh, presentation, something like that, 
or full on, like you might find some springing teal, that's one thing. But at the same range, what if it's a mini bird? You know, if, you're, if you've got a 40 yard crosser with mini birds like this, you just really can't have enough choke. That's absolutely full choke territory. There's just not much to hit. So, that's, that's all up to you and how you shoot and where you shoot as far as hunting as a generality. The best studies on the matter, if we're talking about uh, ducks, uh, pheasant, and similar, three to four hits in the torso, you've got a dead bird. That's what uh, all of the uh, professional uh, studies have shown. Three to four hits is what you want. Obviously, denser is not always better because too dense, you don't have much left to eat. So there's a happy medium there somewhere, and that's part of the fun of it. Figure out what's best uh, for you and your hunting conditions. Decoy and ducks are one thing. You want to spin a dove at 50, 55 yards is quite another. Uh, a going away pheasant that's showing you only tail feathers, where the, the kill zone is about the size of your fist. Um, that's another matter too. So that's it. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it, at least a little bit. But the, the moral of the story, if there is a moral, is uh, everything else considered, constriction works. You want, to, you want more density, you want, want more hits on target. Sure, uh, some barrels are better than others. This fab arm barrel is proof to the highest standards in the industry, higher than anything else that I'm aware of by the Italian Proof House. Um, and you can shoot steel shot with the factory chokes all the way up through 9 slash 10. So it certainly has its advantages. Um, drill barrels are closer bore tolerances, um, so you don't have to worry about a, a, a variation in your bore size throwing off your constriction. That's another advantage. However, once you get that out of the way, it's the constriction of the choke that's the biggest factor. And of course, you can use harder shot, better shot, or you can increase your payload. Ounce and a quarter lead, ounce and a quarter of fives uh, for wild pheasants is uh, generally my favorite. Fours are, are pretty good as well. So, anyway, plenty of things uh, to tinker with, and that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it a sport.